before I was invited to participate in the dialogue series, I had no idea that San Marcos CISD was one of the schools considered to have a significant achievement gap. We have about 9% English language learners in the community and it's a, it's a growing population. A lot of times the immigrants that come here directly from Mexico are very eager learners. Uh, they have a very high desire to succeed, but it's also uh, a drain on resources. And you know they're trying to pick up and learn at grade level when they don't even know the language. During the dialogue series, we discuss things like parental influence and how uh, a lot of people in the community have working parents who aren't there when students get home from schools. So you could have a student who needed help with uh, math homework or science homework and their parents wouldn't be there to assist them because they were working parents. Money helps, yes, it helps with the teachers, it helps with the buildings, it helps with um, equipment in the schools. But a lot of our problems are not right in the school district, they are out in the community, they're in the homes. After discussing it through the dialogue series, we saw that it wasn't necessarily the school district that had the achievement gaps, it was kind of the upbringing that was inducing those achievement gaps in the classroom. I strongly feel that we as parents, if we would get involved and take the school back and have the teachers back, let the teachers know that we stand not just behind you, we stand beside you 100%. Then you have to get the community as a whole involved. This is a community problem. The community must fix this problem. The business community has a self-interest in, 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 in seeing our SOAR program be successful. If, if the SOAR program is successful, if our demographics are raised, if more families make more money because people stay in school longer, every child that graduates from high school is going to make a million more than some, a child that doesn't, and every child that graduates from a four-year college is going to make 1.1 million more. That's a lot more money circulating through the local economy. We have found changes already, some improvements in educational performance as a result of our efforts. As a result of the FAFSA submissions that we've worked on, working with the students, they've had like a 168% increase in the number in one year submitted, and enough that it got notice in Washington. Why are the numbers of uh, FAFSA submissions increasing so rapidly? And that's because of all the efforts to help the students get those filled out and, and, and get them turned in and the encouragement for them to enroll. And all those things help them want to do better in school because now they have a reason. A beauty of the process that we set up here was that people really developed a sense of ownership. Not just ownership for the problems that they were experiencing in their schools, but ownership for the solutions that they themselves developed. San Marcos knows how to fix San Marcos education. I think if um, a solution from Congress or anyone in Washington wouldn't it might, its overall goal might be something that's worthwhile, but unless you're in the trenches, so to speak, in a local school district, you won't really know how to address those issues unless you're here. So a community's campaign to improve a local school district would probably be more effective than a national campaign to fix every school district.